Hello, I'm Dr. JC Lowen, a clinical neuroscientist here at Cognitive Effects. Today we're going to be talking about axonal shearing. Now, what is axonal shearing and what does it mean for brain injury? Well, let's go back to the anatomy of a neuron. We talk a lot about these guys. A neuron has a cell body, an axon, as shown in this image, and then dendrites. This neuron is one of thousands and thousands of similar like cells in your brain that all connect together to allow signals in the brain to go from one place to another to then allow you to go about your daily life. When there is significant impact of the brain inside of the skull, like a concussion, this cell, this neuron can be affected. So let's talk about this axon. This axon is basically a highway that allows signals to propagate from the, the body of the neuron all the way to the next step in the process. And as we all know, what happens when there's bad weather, when there's a vehicle accident on the highway, traffic gets stopped. And that can really affect the metabolism and the health of these neurons. This is where we step into axonal shearing. Now, there is a degree of injury that can occur to these axons. They can be disrupted, where you can still have the connection between the body of the neuron all the way down to the dendrites. There can be twisting. There can even be complete shearing, where there is separation of the cell body by the axon when it gets actually torn to the next step or those dendrites. This is pretty severe. In fact, many people may have heard of the term diffuse axonal injury. This is where someone may have experienced enough trauma to the brain that there is axonal shearing throughout the entire brain, which can lead to coma or even worse, death. Now, in the case of mild traumatic brain injury or concussion, luckily we aren't dealing with that degree of axonal shearing. However, it may still happen. Significant enough force of the brain inside of the skull, which can occur as a result of impact to the head itself, or non-impact, like a whiplash type injury where the head is moving forward and backward, you can end up with certain neurons in your brain where their soma or their body becomes disconnected from their dendrites via that axonal shearing. Now on a small scale that may seem like, oh no, I lost an axon, but in the large scale, this is what can actually lead to symptoms occurring acutely after concussion or soon after you've hit your head and the development of post-concussion syndrome. Now there's a lot of research still looking into why does post-concussion syndrome happen? Why do patients still have these symptoms months to years later? We don't have all the answers, but what we do know is that shearing or disruption of that highway is going to cause a difficulty of that neuron to communicate. And what it needs, especially during the healing process, is blood flow. So if it can't request that blood flow, what's going to happen? Well, what we know at Cognitive FX is that leads to many individuals having symptoms for months to years with no help. Here at Cognitive FX, we understand that recoupling those neurons to the source of their energy and to how they can heal the vasculature is essentially important. That's why we use a tool called functional MRI to look for areas of neurovascular coupling dysregulation basically where the neurons aren't accessing proper blood flow that they need to heal and restore their function. Restoring neurovascular coupling dysfunction is a key factor in rehabilitating post-concussion syndrome and reducing those symptoms. It's been a pleasure. If you have any questions, please click the link in our description.